Zambia's Minister of Information says freedom of speech and press are vibrant under the government of President Hakainde Hichilema. However, Cornelius Muitua says the two are not carte blanche or without restrictions. His comment comes after Archbishop Emeritu Teres Fori Mpondu last week warned of what he called emerging authoritarian tendencies under President Hichilema's government. The Archbishop said in a statement that Zambians are living in a police state where their freedom of assembly and association are at the mercy of the state police. He specifically cited as an example former President Edgar Longu, who he said has no freedom of movement. Mwitwa tells me that the former president is a state asset who is monitored by the state for security reasons. First of all, I think that uh, the bishop is being too extravagant, linguistically extravagant in the way he has uh, characterized and described the situation obtaining in Zambia. For one to say there is uh, authoritarianism and dictatorship is not just a misnomer, it is malicious and highly misplaced and unsubstantiatable claims emanating from vantages of individuals who may have had personal expectations that have been dashed. But that is not the way to uh, express your frustrations. The truth of the matter is that what he is talking about on the ground does not exist. Zambia today, it's free again. To describe Zambia as a police state, it's like you are describing another country and not Zambia. A police state is a country of lawlessness. This is not what is happening in this country. Can we zero in on some of the uh, points that the bishop raised? Uh, he talked about the issue of freedom of movement. And in that, he gave the example of the former president, uh, Edgar Longu, who he said uh, is uh, constrictively imprisoned by the state because the former president, he said, cannot leave the country, cannot do anything uh, without his movement being restricted. Well, again, that is a typical example of misplaced argument on the part of uh, the archbishop. Look, the former president was president, so he knows how former presidents move. The former president gets 80% of the emolument or salary of the current president. So de facto, a former president is not a private individual. This is a state property is a state asset, and therefore his movements are not restricted by the state. His movements are monitored by the state for the sake of providing security. Before I let you go, the uh, bishop makes comment uh, about uh, the government intimidating or trying to silence the private uh, media in Zambia. He cites the example of Hot FM Radio. What can you tell us? Well, first of all, me, I'm the Minister for Information and Government spokesperson. I have no intentions whatsoever to silence the, you know, any media, whether public or private. The media is, uh, you know, freely going about their businesses. The particular media house, as much as it is giving particular individuals freedom to speak, that freedom is not uh, limitless. There is a requirement to realize that those who speak should uh, be uh, cognizant of the fact the people they speak about also have uh, you know, freedoms uh, that need to be respected. You should not be cut blanche because uh, there is freedom to speak, so you can go and speak uh, wantonly. But I can assure you as government spokesperson that uh, there is nothing in the offing in the direction of silencing the media whatsoever. We have a very health working relationship with the media, the media freedoms and press freedoms in Zambia are guaranteed and secure under the leadership of President H.H. Cornelius Mwitwa is the Zambia's information minister. He was speaking with me from the capital, Lusaka. A year ago, Sam Matekani of the Revolution for Prosperity Party, the RFP, was elected prime minister of Lesotho. Last week, the country, noted for its political instability with frequent changes of governments, was at it again. 64 members of parliament sought to introduce a vote of no confidence in the prime minister, but before they could, an RFP member of parliament filed an injunction with the constitutional court to stop the motion until the completion of a national reform process. Key among the reforms 
is that a certain prime minister can only be removed by a two-thirds majority vote in parliament instead of the current simple majority. In a surprising move, the country's security forces seal off parliament to prevent the no-confidence vote from taking place. Professor Sipo Sipi is a former deputy vice-chancellor for institutional support at the University of Zululand. He tells me that the security forces are undermining the freedom of Basoto to express themselves through their parliament. It's very unfortunate for the security forces uh, to get into a political space. In a democratic constitutionalism, what we have is that the, the security forces uh, serve the government of the day and they allow the political process to take its course without interference. That is the fundamental issue. That's why it's called a constitutional crisis, because uh, you have soldiers now participating and interfering in the political process. And what you have in Utu at the moment, you have um, a prime minister who is not really a politician. He's a businessman who has gone in there to say he's going to resolve uh, issues that politicians are not able to do. But he has done so by getting into the political space. And when you are in the political space, you are expected to play the political game and follow the rules. Now, what do you have with the parliamentarians? Whether they are pursuing selfish interest is that they are not convinced that he's taking the Soto in the right direction. And it may be that the, what they are pursuing are narrow interests. But you do not suspend democracy to promote democracy. Professor, it was because of this, uh, what I would call, constant changes of government in Lesotho that Sadek came in and asked for a reform of the political system, particularly what it would take to introduce a vote of no confidence in the prime minister, which is two-thirds. Now, the prime minister is saying that he would like for that a reform process to take place. Yeah, but the... What he is actually saying, if he has confidence in himself, that motion should be defeated. Because ultimately, the people must be able to dictate. It cannot be Sadek. Sadek can make a suggestion to say, let us go this route, and we think this route is the best way. But then now to suspend the right of the people through the parliamentary representative to express themselves, it is now like having a country that is now ruled by Sadek. I do think that sometimes uh, people must al be allowed to make their own mistakes and correct them. But as soon as we start having external supervision, then you're going to also create another instability where the people say the government that we have here is not the government of the people of Lesotho. It's the government of Sadek. So, Professor, let me ask you before I let you go. The introduction of the security forces, the police particularly, barring some members of parliament to even come to parliament, who is supposed to rein in the police? Well, that is uh, the, where the crisis comes in. Because what the police, what the security forces are doing, they are undermining the free expression of the will of the people through their parliamentary representative. And if that is allowed, there's nothing that... Uh, suggest that this is a one time only. Effectively, if the security forces are not happy with something, then they're going to undermine uh, the democratic process and undermine parliament. And uh, this is something that should not be allowed because we've seen the interventions of security forces in the rest of the continent that once they're there, they then end up being removed by other security agencies. And then you will start having military dictators repeating itself. Professor Sipo Sipe is a political analyst and former deputy vice chancellor. Niger's ousted President Mohamed Bazoum is with his family and is doing well. A relative told AFP Sandy after claims by the country's new military rulers this week that he had tried to escape. 
He is at the presidential residence in Yami with his wife and son and is doing well. The family member said, adding that he was allowed to make one phone call. The sources added that his doctor was able to see him and bring him food. On Thursday, the military regime which overthrew the democratically elected Bazoum on July 26th said they had failed an attempt by him to escape their custody. The escape plan, the regime's spokesman said, had involved Bazoum getting to a hideout on the outskirts of the capital Niami before flying out on a helicopter belonging to a foreign power towards Nigeria. The regime added that the main actors and some of the accomplices were arrested. A lawyer's corrective representing Bazoum rejected the fabricated accusations and said Bazoum was being held in communicado. French President Emmanuel Macron expressed Friday his concern over the uncertain situation and called for his immediate release and that of his wife and son. Since he was toppled by the military in July, Bazoum has refused to resign and has been held at his residence in the heart of the presidential palace along with his wife and son. Last month, Bazoum's lawyers said he had filed for a legal case with a court of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, against those who deposed him and appealing for the restoration of constitutional order. ECOWAS has warned that it could intervene militarily in Niger if democratic efforts if diplomatic efforts to return Bazoum to power fail. Former colonial power and ally to the deposed the president in the fight against the jihadist groups attacking Niger, France agreed with the military rulers demands to withdraw its 1,500 troops by December 31st. France earlier pulled out troops for Mali and Burkina Faso, which have undergone coups in the past two years.